We've seen a backyard habitat designed to attract birds and a backyard habitat designed to draw butterflies. Now let's visit a backyard habitat designed to invite small mammals. Cami Donaldson lives on the east coast of Florida in a fairly urban area in downtown Melbourne. From a distance, her yard looks a bit unmanicured compared to a traditionally landscaped yard. But when you move in closer, it's easy to see this yard is filled with a tremendous diversity of native plants and animal life. Why did you choose to make your yard such a lush, beautiful native wildlife habitat? When I first bought the house, I was just beginning to learn about real Florida, even though I've been in Florida my entire life. Uh, and as a new, brand new homeowner, when I looked at what it was going to cost to put in a sprinkler system and the effort it was going to take to mow the yard, and I didn't really want to pay someone to do it, all things, these things started to come together. And I just happened to learn about the Florida Native Plant Society and find out that there was an alternative. And I said, boy, I am not doing this grass and sprinkler thing. Everything here is native or if it's not, we're trying to get rid of it, and it's all naturally adapted to rainfall, thrives on natural rainfall. The drought had absolutely no effect. You know, a few years ago, we went through about a three or four year period of drought, absolutely no effect on this yard. In fact, the plant right next to you, Tracy, that thing does best on drought. <laughs> That's called tough bumelia. It's a fantastic plant for insects, which is great for birds because a lot of birds really require insects, especially when they're nesting and they need to feed protein to their young. So a lot of native plants just really are spectacular celebrities during the drought. Cammie's yard contains an incredible number of food plants for birds and small mammals, including prickly pear, Florida privet, longleaf pine, dwarf blueberry, silver saw palmetto, and sea grapes. Even though her little one-third of an acre yard is located right in the middle of downtown Melbourne and surrounded by other homes and several roads, she still gets an astonishing variety of native wildlife. We have had a rabbit once come hopping literally down the path. It looked like he'd been planted there by Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> We did have a gopher tortoise once appear here. We're not sure if maybe someone thought we were a wildlife sanctuary and dropped him off. We do have three box turtles resident in the yard. Of course, like many Floridians, we have raccoons and possums. Um, I don't know that we've ever seen an armadillo in our yard, but we've seen evidence of armadillos. They dig little holes looking for insects. Um, and of course, we have snakes. We have black snakes, black racers and we've had corn snakes. We once had a coral snake uh, several years ago. We've never seen it since. Uh, we have legless lizards, the glass, what, what I call glass snakes. Um, and we enjoy watching them chase after lizards and, and other things. And we have tons of butterflies uh, because we plant a lot of butterfly host plants. As Cami has learned, fruit and berry producing native plants are vital if you want to make your yard friendly to Florida's small mammals. Seedy berries will satisfy the hunger of many different birds, but small mammals are particularly attracted to fleshy fruit like grapes, plums, blackberries, and persimmons. Cover is also crucial if you want to attract small mammals to your backyard. Animals need cover, places to hide from predators, places to raise their young, and to feed in quiet. Planting a variety of vegetation in different sizes and heights provides the best cover opportunities for Florida wildlife. This includes ground cover, small plants, shrubs, and trees of different heights. Of course, you noticed out our kitchen window, we have a big thicket of Walter's viburnum, which gives us the ability to see a lot of birds.